Eleanor Fetty Place's Receipt Book is a book of recipes compiled in 1604, with additions and marginal notes in several hands. It was first edited and published in 1986 by Hilary Sperling, the wife of a descendant of Fetty Place who had inherited the manuscript. It provides a direct view of Elizabethan cookery in an aristocratic country house, with advice on household management. Context The Fetty Places were an aristocratic English family of Norman descent, who lived in Berkshire and Oxfordshire. Eleanor nay Poole, c. 1570 c. 1647 was the wife of Sir Richard Fetty Place, who owned the substantial Appleton Manor in what is now Oxfordshire, formerly in Berkshire. The family had become wealthy from wool. She wrote her Book of Receipts in 1604. Apart from Eleanor's recipes, the book contains marginal notes and additions written by several different people, indicating that it grew over more than one lifetime. In 1647 Eleanor left the manuscript to her niece, Anne Horner, "...desiring her to kepi it for my sake." <laughs> Publication The book was first published only in 1986, by the Salamander Press in association with Penguin Books it was then published in paperback by Penguin in 1987, the manuscript having been inherited by the husband of the editor, Hilary Sperling. The compilation gives an intimate view of Elizabethan era cookery and domestic life in an aristocratic country household. The book contains over 200 recipes, updated by Sperling. After an introduction on the Fetty Place family, the book is structured into twelve sections for the months of the year. The book ends with a bibliography, notes and index. Topic recipes The book provides recipes for various forms of bread, such as buttered loaves, for apple fritters, preserves and pickles, and a celebration cake for 100 people. New ingredients such as the sweet potato appear. A recipe for dressing a shoulder of mutton calls for the use of the newly available citrus fruits. Take a shoulder of mutton and being half roasted, cut it in great slices and save the gravy then take claret wine and cinnamon and sugar with a little cloves and mace beatany and the peel of an orange cut thin and minced very smale. Put the mutton the gravy and these things together and boil yt between two dishes, wring the juice of an orange into yt as yt boileth, when yt is boiled enough lay the bone of the mutton being first broiled in the dish with it then cut slices of lemons and lay on the mutton and so serve yt in. Fetty Place included a recipe for white biscuit bread, nowadays called meringue, using one and a half pounds of sugar, a handful of flour, and twelve beaten egg whites. Reception Paula Dietz, writing in the New York Times, quotes Sperling's claim that the book describes "...many aspects of Elizabethan household life about which historians had no knowledge." The Oxford historian A. L. Rose described the book as "...a fascinating find," and wrote that it deserved "...to taste of the Victorian Mrs. Beaton's success as a best-seller." The novelist Lawrence Norfolk, writing in The Guardian, described the book as containing "...recipes, remedies and preserving methods gathered over many years, almost like annotations in a family Bible." He praises Hilary Sperling for testing the recipes, "...a heroic undertaking in a modern kitchen," only balking at Sir Walter Raleigh's "...syrup of tobacco," which was then widely grown in the west of England. He mentions especially delicate cat's tongue biscuits, light sauces, and liaisons whisked up, and describes Fetty Place's recipes as a sophisticated cuisine but presented as typical of the time. The historian Elaine Leong describes the effect of the modern title of this and similar books such as Lady Sedley's Receipt Book and Lady Borlace's Receipt's Book as conjuring up a homey picture of the lady of the manor collecting all sorts of household information as part of her housewifely duties." Leong cautions that while the modern editors of these books no doubt based their titles on ownership notes inscribed in the manuscripts, these titles obscure the rich and complex stories of authorship and ownership connected with the texts. <laughs> Notes <laughs>